In this video, I will discuss recent UFO news and the upcoming UFO report that's slated to drop October 31st, Halloween. It's 48 hours until it drops. Let's do this, baby. Baby, yeah. baby. And yeah. I, I, you know, we have another report coming out very soon. Yeah, by Monday. Fact, yeah. Probably by Monday. I've heard it's going to be delayed a few days, but I don't know. I've heard that it's going to be delayed a little bit, but I don't think yeah. by too much. All right, Leslie Kane. I feel you. Maybe it's not 48 hours, but you best believe it's coming. Here's a tweet by Merrick Renenkampf where he goes over what the United States Congress demanded from the intelligence community for the initial UFO report versus what they're demanding for this upcoming UFO report. Let's dig in. He writes, not to get anyone's hope up, but Congress is demanding a lot more in the October 2022 UAP report than last year's report. Compare the statutory requirements below. Key elements, breakthrough technology, health effects, nuclear nexus are highlighted in red. And when the UFO report comes out, I will cover it in depth, whether on my channel or someone else's channel or both. The following is an article that dropped today, October 28th which appears to be pushed back from the Pentagon on the heels of the upcoming UFO report. It's by journalist Julian Barnes, and it's titled, Many military UFO reports are just foreign spying or airborne trash. Forget space aliens or hypersonic technology. Classified assessments show that many episodes have ordinary explanations. I'll give my take on this article. But first, I want to give some takes from people on Twitter because there's a lot of great ones. This comes from journalists Sauger and Jetty. Unreal. Pentagon report verifies that while many UFO sightings have conventional explanations, others for which lots of data video exists do not. That's the headline, not this BS. Journalist Christopher Sharp. So DOD is so desperate for this story to go away that they prefer to claim that the U.S. does not have control of its own skies due to Chinese spying activities? Has China for years spied continuously off the East Coast without consequence, whilst Navy aviators are unaware? Terrace Matla writes, It's quite disappointing to see such feignant reporting. I agree with some aspects of what's being stated in the article. However, there's not a single comment from credible individuals who disagree or reportedly encountered UAP. Chris Mellon and former Lieutenant Ryan Graves, among others. I wrote, I read Julian Barnes' article several times and the main takeaway is that most UFO cases are resolved. I always thought this was well established, not too concerned about his piece. It will be future congressional hearings where people go on record that will give greatest clarity. Music and truth responds. The takeaway is huge though. While you're reading it with that kind of reasonable Thought, the public sees, remember all that UFO stuff from the military that got all that UFO stuff going? Turns out it was all BS. It was the Chinese. That's it. That's all. Done. Just the headline. To which I respond, Congress is not going to stop pursuing this based on this one article. Relax. This is my favorite response to Julian Barnes' New York Times article by far. I think Paul Anderson really nails it. He writes, what is the point of doing this now before the report actually comes out? You did that last year too. First, Congress mandated an unclassified report by October 31st, probably with a classified annex. Not just classified as stated. Yes, most UAP reports turn out to have prosaic explanations, but we already know that. That is not some big revelation. That's true for civilian reports and probably similar for military ones also. The newest congressional language for IAA NDAA 2023 specifically wants the DOD to concentrate on the genuine unknown incidents and not the cases of drones, airborne clutter, etc. But your article doesn't even mention that. Both the congressional language and senators who have talked about this and have been in classified briefings have said that some cases are not easy to explain. There could easily be adversarial surveillance happening, but some reports are still difficult to explain that way. For the three initial videos released, the Navy witnesses are adamant they are not optical illusions. The videos are only a small part of the testimony. Here's an excerpt from Julian Barnes' article. Another video known as Gimbal shows an object that appears to be turning or spinning. Military officials now believe that is the optics of the classified image sensor designed to help target weapons make the object appear like it is moving in a strange way. Well, what military officials? Unfortunately, we don't know because all of the sources that Barnes used in this article are anonymous except for Susan Goff, who didn't give any specifics on any UAP encounter. However, 
For the sake of argument, let's say that's true, that the rotating of the object has something to do with the optics as opposed to the object itself. Even if we were to grant that, Alpha Check has a point. He wrote, the rotation of the object has never been the most important part of the encounter, but rather the existence of the entire fleet unable to be identified by multiple advanced radar systems on different platforms. Gimbal object also differed from others in the fleet. I will show you an animation that my friend Stephen Nikolic constructed of the gimbal object and the fleet that it was in close proximity to. And former Lieutenant Ryan Graves actually commented on this animation and I'm going to show that to you now. So here's the exchange between Ryan Graves and Stephen Nikolic. He deleted the animation, but he gave me permission a long time ago to use it. And I have it. And I'm going to show it to you after this exchange. Ryan Graves writes in response to the animation. This is actually very good. It wasn't as clean as this, but as that is the general behavior. Additionally, again, relative altitudes are unknown to me. Steven responds, thank you and wow. Okay, I don't believe this was ever mentioned before. I understand altitudes were not known, but this seems a significant insight, especially considering. Mick West analysis that insists on the rotation merely being glare artifact. Here's Steven Nikolic's reconstruction of what was reportedly seen in the longer gimbal video that has not ever been released. It shows the bigger gimbal rotating along with other smaller craft rotating in alignment with it, as far as I understand. And we and I already shared with you what Ryan Graves thought of this animation. On October 26th, Ryan Spriggs of Somewhere in the Skies podcast interviewed James Fox and asked him if he thinks we're going to find out more about America's involvement in the 1996 Virginia UFO crash. Do you think we're going to find out more about America's involvement think, in this hey, game? Look, man, in the last couple of days, more, two people have come out of the woodworks confirming this case and photographic evidence of this case. And more is coming out. I guarantee you it's coming. I, I know it is because people are like, the hell with it. I've been sitting on this for 26 years. This is potentially the biggest story since Roswell, and I don't care anymore. Okay. In that same light, Eric Weinstein stated the following, and recall that Eric Weinstein had a briefing by Lou Elizondo very recently on the UFO situation. Keith Erskinas Weinstein what are the chances that the Department of Defense will disclose enough data on encounters with multi-sensor data so a hypothesis can be proposed about the phenomena? Eric responds, They are running out of road, so it is way up. People are fed up. Members of the United States Congress are also fed up in how the Department of Defense and the intelligence community has been dealing with the UAP issue, leaving them in the dark, not cooperating, stonewalling, dragging their feet, not wanting to divulge information. Why are they doing that? Well, to me, it's pretty obvious because there's been a cover-up, in my opinion. It could be wrong, but that's my analysis. And we'll see where this road goes. Here, Osvaldo Franco got in touch with Senator Kirsten Gillibrand recently. I think it was in August. And he asked her, about the UFO situation. Here's the clip. <laughs> Senator Gillibrand, I want to thank you on behalf of so many of my friends and colleagues for your UAP reform support. Yes. When I have some questions. When can we expect a public hearing regarding uh, UFOs and UAPs, specifically with the, the, these, these reforms in place? I'm supposed to get a report in the next, I think, month or two. Yes, ma'am. Um, Yeah. 
Yes. We're going to stand by the service now where she's off this stuff. Yes. They have video, they have uh, radar, they have heat sensors, they have everything. Materials. We, they have it. So I'm not going to let it go. I'm 100% committed. And if you have information you want to Yes, I do. Very so much so. Yes, ma'am. I would very much like to. Also, can I interview you? I'm trying to do a public affairs show about this. Thank you so much. Two days ago, James Fox did a question and answer, Ask Me Anything, on Reddit. I'm going to share a couple question and answers that I found particularly compelling. Let's go. James, a few questions. Please answer all. Number one, did you see with your own eyes the photos or videos from the Virginia creatures? No. Is the person who's in possession of this material a Brazilian civilian or military? Both. Is the person Victor Rio Pacini? No. How much are you offering for those photos, videos? 200,000 US. What is holding your negotiations to obtain those photos, videos? Unclear fear. Explain in details what do you have to do to release those images, videos? More coming soon. We are doing everything in our power. Lastly, what problem with law the two kids from the Chuck Clark tape had? Not sure, probably spying on the base. Hey James, do you think the Virginia case will be addressed at the next UFO report to Congress? He answers, only behind the scenes. I'm told this film has already made the rounds on the Hill. Hello James, two questions. One, if and when disclosure de definitively happens, do you believe we will receive verbal confirmation from governments without physical or visual evidence? Or will we receive disclosure with physical and or visual evidence? Two, Realistically, will this be a slow, drawn-out, trickled-out disclosure? And what is your best guess timeline for it all? James responds, We are becoming more and more aware of the physical evidence in possession of some unknown government agency. I can't see any incentive for said agency to reveal what they have. Nonetheless, we will keep the pressure on. Hey James, do you know anything about Virginia footage being disclosed by the New York Times? There's lots of rumors going around this week of a big report that's about to come out. James responds, not the New York Times. However, quite possibly another organization. We shall see very soon. What does our human future on Earth look like post-disclosure? James responds, I firmly believe that an acceptance of non-human intelligence would have a unifying effect on humanity. We would see ourselves for who we really are, one race, one species. Exo Magazine TV had an absolutely fantastic interview a couple days ago with Chris Mellon. And... There's a clip that I want to share with you that is particularly relevant to what we're talking about, and I'll give my commentary afterwards. Okay, so all this information now goes to this newly formed organization, which is called Aero, right? On what's it? And that's about to change. That's about to it, change. It's now the. What's it, it then? The, the, so the next, next thing? thing is going to be the joint uh, aerospace hyphen undersea. Phenomena or phenomenon program office. Yeah, yeah, it's becoming a joint program office. Okay. So now the the focus has but been. So the part of the name change, while you're asking about that, part of the yeah. reason for the change is that the Air Force has not wanted to include information from space. The Air Force has said, "Oh, UAP just says aerial, so we don't have to tell you if we see something on orbit. We don't have to tell you if we see something in deep space." And so they want to make sure that they address that in the name because they were hiding behind this semantic, this definition to withhold information. The same thing with the Navy. The Navy has information about things under the ocean anomalies. So they wanted to put, so it's now it's aerospace, air and space and undersea. It's really a, a sad state of affairs when the UFO office has to create a name that makes it harder for the Air Force, the Navy, to withhold information that the Armed Service Committee and the Intelligence Committee wants on UAP so they can have a better understanding of what UAP are and what their capabilities are. Now, as far as the upcoming report slated for October 31st, although it may be delayed according to Leslie Kane, what are my expectations on this report? Well, to be quite frank, I don't have any expectations. None. Zero. I prefer that. I've heard that 
the office is understaffed, thus it's going to be an underwhelming report. I've heard others say that the report's gonna be very significant. I just don't know, we'll all find out together. But what I'm very confident of is that this is not going away. The United States Congress is not going to close up shop, if you will. They've been given classified briefings. They've, been, they've seen higher fidelity data that's been released to the public. They've heard what the pilots and radar operators had to say in classified settings. So I would imagine they were able to share information they can't share with the public. They have a grasp of what we're dealing with. Many of them have publicly stated that this technology is not a foreign adversary, nor is it our technology. What would lead them to say that other than the classified briefings? You want to argue they're just UFO fans and they're, they're just LARPing? Okay, maybe, maybe not. This isn't going away. We are not in the beginning of the end, in my opinion. We are in the beginning of the beginning. And this is not going away. This is not going to fizzle out. This is not going to evaporate. This is not going to correct itself, if you will. In my opinion, but I could be wrong. To me, the correction is not this going away. The correction is disclosure. Transparency on UAP. Because the government has high information zone, high fidelity data on these mysterious craft, in my opinion. And I hope that what James Fox is pursuing comes to fruition. That is attainment of video and photographic evidence of the creatures that allegedly were seen by many witnesses from 1996 after a UFO craft crash in Virginia, Brazil. This is exciting, ladies and gentlemen. This is exciting. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we're just getting started here at the Post Disclosure World YouTube channel. And if you'd like to support my channel, you can check out my merch shop where I sell t-shirts. You can become a patron. You could give me a one-time donation. You could become a YouTube member. Or you could just slap a like on this bad boy and I'll appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Special thanks to all patrons, YouTube members, those that have bought merch, those that have given me a one-time donation. I couldn't do without you. Thank you so much. See you in the next episode.